Hi there, this is Heather, Shutterbug 101. Today we'll be going over the Panasonic Lumix ZS100, the point and shoot one inch sensor camera. Let's get started. The Panasonic ZS100 is a point and shoot camera with a 20 megapixel 1 inch sensor. It has 5 axis stabilization, a zoom range of 25 to 250 millimeters, and 49 focus points. This camera also has a fixed 3 inch touch LCD screen, an electronic viewfinder, and a continuous drive of 10 frames per second. The ZS100 has 4K video up to 30 frames has built-in Wi-Fi, and has a USB charging feature to charge in-body, on the go. Today we'll be going over the buttons, doors, and menus to help you find your way around the camera. Uh, the Panasonic ZS100. If you have seen my ZS200 video, uh, the layout is going to be almost exactly the same. Uh, there are some minor differences when it comes to uh, focal length and a few different features from uh, this camera and the other, but overall the layout is actually fairly similar. Um, the reason I did this one is because uh, people really wanted to see kind of the difference when it came to the zoom, like, you know, is this a pretty substantial difference? Should I go for the ZS200 over the 100? Um, also, I believe that the 200 has a grip here as well versus this, which is a little slippery if, if you find that things slip out of your hands often. Otherwise, I, I feel like it's easy to hold on to. So as you can see, if we start uh, just with the front of the camera here, this, uh, the material that they use, like I don't get sweaty hands, but naturally we all have oils in our fingers. Um, I do find that this tends to look kind of dirty after touching it because it tends to leave fingerprints. Um, so naturally you want to carry around a microfiber cloth just to get it nice and clean if it starts to bug you. Uh, same with the back screen. The back screen naturally with it being touch screen, uh, you'll get your fingerprints on it. You might get your nose print on it using the viewfinder there. So as you can see with our lens here, it does say uh, the focal length on the top of the lens. This is a 25 to 250. Um, estimate with how the zoom works. If you're familiar with how lenses work on interchangeable lens cameras, you'll know that the low number means a wider angle versus the bigger number, which is going to be a more narrow angle. It's going to provide you more distance. Um, it does have a aperture of 2.8 to 5.9, which just means that at that 25 mark, it's going to be a 2.8, but you zoom it out to the 250. The most you can open that is 5.9 on your aperture mode. So do keep that in mind. It does have a um, adjustment ring here. So you can use this for manual focus, for zoom. You can actually tell this exactly what you want it to do in the menu itself. Um, and we'll get into that last. On this side of the camera, naturally there is nothing there, so we'll move to this side of the camera where we do have a little door here. If we open that up, you can see that we have our HDMI cable port, uh, which will allow us to connect this to a television, a computer screen. Um, it essentially shows everything that's on the back screen on this camera. Um, so exactly the way you see it, just on a larger scale. Um, you can show a slideshow of pictures to friends and family. You can show pictures that you took at an event, whatever you want to do with that. Um, and then we have our charging, our USB cable uh, port here, which will allow us to transfer pictures from the camera to our computer, allow us to upgrade firmware, um, but also allow us to charge the battery in the camera itself, which is really nice to have uh, when you're on the go, when you don't have like a wall outlet to plug into. Going to the bottom of the camera here, see that we have our universal tripod mount there. Um, we do have our door here, which is gonna house the battery itself and a slot for our card. Naturally, I don't have a SD card in there at the moment, but it is spring loaded. So if you um, put the card in and you push down, it should stay flush in here to take it out. Do not try and pry it out with your fingernails. Push down and it should spring right out. 
Going over the top of the camera here, we do have our on and off switch. Um, we have our mode dial here. I'm gonna start with IA. IA is actually going to be intelligent auto. A lot of people think when they get this camera, oh, the A, it's auto. That's what that means. No, actually the IA is going to be your automatic mode. Intelligent auto is going to allow this camera to be well intelligent. Um, to where if you point it at a person, it's going to kick into portrait mode. If you have it pointed at a landscape, it's gonna kick into uh, like a landscape mode versus if, for example, if I grab my mouse here and I have it on intelligent auto mode and I wanna get really close to the subject, you see that up in the corner there, you see the little flower. That means that it's kicking into macro mode because it knows that I'm getting really, really close. Um, so intelligent auto just kind of has that overall control where it's like oh you're taking a picture of this and it sets your settings for you this is a great mode to be in when you don't know what's coming your way if you don't understand your shutter speed and apertures yet if you're just getting used to this camera and trying to find your way around it um, it's a great place to start and kind of let it be your default otherwise if you want to make the most out of this camera i would definitely move into your p mode that's going to be your program mode um, it's just like auto but it gives you more control over where it's focusing how it's focusing your color temperature your you know all of those things but it's going to assist you with all of your other settings so your picture still comes out a properly lit setting which is really nice your A mode is not your auto mode, that's your aperture mode. Uh, what I was talking about in the beginning, that 2.8 to 5.9, that is going to be the opening in your lens. That is going to give you uh, more light intake in low light situations. It's also going to give you that nice blurry background, sharp foreground um, in those situations. So naturally um, you won't see it a ton with this camera because it, you know, has a smaller sensor and that 2.8 is only available at 25 millimeters. So you might catch that, you might not. So do keep that in mind. Uh, shutter speed, that is going to be for uh, naturally controlling how fast the camera takes the picture. So you can capture motion as a still or show motion as a, as a blur. If you want to show that nice smooth motion of water going over a waterfall, you would put it into your shutter speed mode. If you wanted to uh, capture a bird in flight, shutter speed mode as well. It's just two different extremes doing a longer time versus a shorter time that it's capturing it. Uh, and of course we have M, which is going to be your full on manual mode. You have all the control. The camera's only doing what you tell it to. Um, I definitely wouldn't jump into this mode right away and go, I'm gonna learn all this on manual because that's what I'm supposed to do. No, not at all. Um, don't, don't let manual be your main mode or else you'll find that you'll end up using your phone over the camera. Um, you'll find that maybe it's too complicated and it doesn't have to be. We have the movie mode which is the little video camera with the M. Now, you don't have to go into your movie mode in order to record a video. Um, you can be in your auto mode, your P mode, your A mode, your S mode. You can be in any of those modes, and all you have to do is push this red button. Push the red button once to start recording, push it again to stop recording. Pretty easy. Um, the reason that they have a movie mode is because it gives you more settings and more controls over like, uh, like the mic levels and that sort of thing, which these holes right up here, that is actually going to be your microphone that's built into the camera. Your C mode is gonna be a custom mode. So for example, if maybe you take pictures of things that you make for Etsy or something like that, you sell product um, and you have very specific setup where you have it LEDs or maybe a still life box or whatever you do, um, and you find the perfect settings to take your pictures. You can actually save that to your C mode. And so if you go out, take some pictures outside, go to a friend's birthday party and take pictures, whatever it is, and you come back and want to take more pictures of your product, all you have to do is dial it into your C mode and it's back where you saved it. We have the panoramic mode, which is this little squishy square here, which um, will, which on the screen will tell you to take your pictures from left to right in a nice steady motion. Don't go up and down, it'll be erratic with it or else it will not work. 
Then we have our scene modes. Our scene modes are going to be automatic presets. So it's still auto, but you're telling the camera instead of it going, oh, I think you're taking a picture of this. You're going, no, I'm taking a picture of a portrait. I'm taking a picture of scenery. I'm taking a picture of a sunset. Uh, I want glistening water. I want, I'm taking a picture of a nightscape. You know, all of these things. There's even, you know, food and pets and sports and all these things in the scene mode itself. And then we have our little painter's palette here, which is our creative mode. These are gonna be like filters. If you have an Instagram, you're very familiar with filters. Uh, this is gonna be very similar. It does have a few more advanced ones, has different black and whites, um, high dynamic, toy effect. But my favorite one to kind of play with is the one point color, which will allow you to pick one specific color out of your scene that you're taking a picture of and everything else will be black and white. It kind of gives you something to play with. Um, it kind of gives you a, a good pop to your pictures. So say if you're on a walk and you come across like a fire truck at a fire station and you, uh, and you choose just for the red to come out, everything around it is going to be black and white, but the red is really gonna make things pop, which is really cool. And for the rest of the video, I'm going to stay in the P mode because on Intelligent Auto, all of our options are really limited for us to look at. So P mode will give us um, full array of what is in our quick menu and our menu and those things just to kind of go over, uh, just in case you're following along. Um, so over here, you'll see that there is a W and a T. This is going to be wide angle, which is all the way zoomed back to 25. And then if you go T for telephoto, you'll see that this barrel extends to zoom out to that 250. Um, so this lever is going to be your zoom lever. And then the button right in the middle is going to be your shutter button. So if you push halfway down to focus, you'll hear the beep and you push all the way down to take the picture and you're all set. This knob here is going to be our adjustment knob. So depending on what mode you're in or what settings, um, this is going to control either shutter speeds, your apertures, your ISOs, wh whatever it may be. Now, going to the back of the camera here, you can see that we have our viewfinder. So right here is where we have a little sensor. So if we hit the sensor here, I just put my shadow over it, you'll see that the viewfinder does turn on. This is to indicate when your face gets close enough to that viewfinder, it just automatically switches for you. Now we do have a button here that's labeled L LVF or the function for button. So if I hit this button once, it's just going to go to the viewfinder. The sensor does nothing. It's just the viewfinder itself. If we hit it again, it's just the screen. So again, that sensor is not going to turn that viewfinder on. And if I hit it one more time, it's going to automatically turn it back to auto. We do have a little wheel here. Um, which is going to be our diopter. Sorry for the flashing. Um, the diopter is actually going to be for adjusting this viewfinder to your eyes. So if you wear glasses or something like that, you may not see as clearly as I do. So you can adjust this wheel so whatever's in here is nice and clear. Uh, we do have our flash switch here. So if we hit that, that's when our flash is going to pop up on top. We have our autofocus and auto exposure lock. This will allow you to click and hold this button when you want to uh, lock in an autofocus or lock in an auto or lock in your exposure or um, certain light hitting in a certain subject. Over here in the function one button. So just so you can see these buttons more here, the F1 button or the 4k burst mode is actually going to capture at 30 frames per second in a 4k clip and allow you to kind of choose out your picture in the 4k clip versus having it on continuous mode, which we'll still go over here in a bit, uh, which just does the continuous pictures and saves every single one. So say you took 10 continuous pictures in a regular continuous drive, you'd have to go through and if only one came out, you have to go delete, 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 delete on all nine of the ones that did not come out. Versus if you use the 4K burst mode, now you get to go through those 10, uh, 10 frames, save the one that came out and delete the 4K file. So there's a lot, um, few, there's a lot more few steps 
um, doing the 4K burst mode, which is really, really neat. Um, it's something to play with if you take pictures of motion. Uh, the function two button is actually going to be our post focus mode. Uh, this will allow you to take a still photo, whether of flowers or landscape or whatever it may be, and choose the focus point on the screen after you've taken the picture, um, which is kind of neat. Now, um, if you do find that you're taking pictures on a trip and it's taking a little bit longer to capture the picture than normal uh, because post, post focus does that, make sure that this is off because I have had customers where they've accidentally turned this on and then they get back from their trip and they're like, yeah, I don't understand. I can't take my pictures off. And the reason why is because you have to go through your pictures that are on post focus. You have to choose the focus point and then save it. At that point it is now a savable file. Um, and when you go on a trip and take 500 pictures, you now have 500 pictures to go through and choose your focus point. So do be wary of this. It's a cool tool, but it's also kind of one of those beware uh, situations where it could kind of mess things up. Uh, you do have your playback button to look back at pictures. Um, if you push up on the directional pad here during shooting mode, this is going to control your exposure. So just to kind of show you what that does, I'm gonna dial back in here to our screen. If we hit up and we use our direct, or we use our dial up on top here, if we go plus, it's gonna make things brighter. If we go minus, it actually makes things darker. Um, so if you wanted to make your scene a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, depending on your situation and without changing any major settings, um, you can just hit the up button here and change that. The middle button is going to be your set button as well. If you hit the left button here, this is going to be your focus mode. So you have autofocus, you have manual focus, which you would use that ring up in front here. And then you have autofocus macro, which will allow you to focus a little bit closer, which is nice. If we hit the right button, this is going to be our white balance. This is going to control if uh, the scene needs to be warmer or cooler to uh, get accurate whites in your um, photograph. Auto white balance does a fairly good job at figuring it out on its own. Um, so just be wise with that. Uh, if you're in a situation where maybe you just want to play with these and kind of test these out, you'll see that some are more blue, some are more orange. And, um, you know, you can see if you like the situation to be a little bit cooler, a little bit warmer. Um, but do remember if you move from your location to another location with different lighting, you always want to change it back to auto white balance, um, or else you're risking on getting blue and orange people in your pictures. And believe me, it's easier to adjust the temperature in editing with auto white balance. If you want it a little bit warmer or cooler than it is trying to fix pictures of blue or orange people that you've taken on a wrong white balance. Um, and if you push it down, of course, this is going to give you your drive mode. So the single square is going to be one single picture. If you click and hold the shutter button down, it will take one shot. You have your burst mode. You have your 4K burst mode. You have your bracketing and then you have your timer as well. Um, we do have our display button here. So it does change the display on screen, uh, depending on what you wish, if you want it off completely. This one is probably the most simple where it has just kind of your basic um, information here. It'll tell you at the bottom here, if you have a card in it, how many pictures you have left, what your battery level is, just kind of what some of your basic settings are. And then we have our trash can button, which in playback mode will delete pictures that you've taken if you you know, took a blurry one or one of your finger or whatever. Um, but it, in shooting mode, it's actually going to be your quick menu. So if we hit that button, it allows us to change all these things on the top and bottom of the screen. So on the top here, this guy is going to be for um, how it conveys color. So standard is going to be just kind of like this is the basic should be how your eye sees. You have vivid color, natural color. Uh, monochrome, which is black and white. So you can change all that there. You have your flash settings here. So if you want forced flash on, red eye, um, you can do that. That's as long as this flash is popped up. It will not pop up on its own. You gotta use that little switch there. 
You have your video settings, if you wanna shoot in HD or 4K, your ratio size. So three by two or four by three is typically the most common. You have whether you wanna shoot in RAW versus JPEG. JPEG is gonna be the one with the boxes and the arrow. It means that it's compressing the picture, which is what a JPEG is, versus if you wanna do just RAW or RAW and JPEG. You have your autofocus settings here, how it's autofocusing. AFS is gonna be autofocus single. Um, this is going to be for when you're taking a picture of something still, a still life, uh, someone posing, a landscape where it's gonna focus and lock on. Autofocus continuous, AFC, is gonna be where the subject's moving. So a surfer surfing in the water or um, a bird flying in midair where it's gonna continually focus as the subject moves in the frame versus AFF, which is autofocus flexible or autofocus auto, where you're letting the camera determine if the subject is still or moving for you. Then we have our autofocus area where it's autofocusing. So you could do one specific area, which is what I like. I like to focus on one specific area of the fit photo. You can make it a little bit bigger of an area. The entire area, which is the 49 focus points, tracking for movement, and then face and eyes for portraits. Then we have our metering, where it's taking the light from. You have evaluative, which is going to be uh, considering the entire image and finding a good balance there. Center weighted, which is gonna take whatever's in the middle, which is kind of what my recording camera is on now. You'll see that if I move the camera, the black portion of it, into the middle of the frame, the scene gets much brighter because it's trying to uh, make this kind of the 18% gray. Um, versus if I have it on a backlit screen or even my white background, it's going to uh, make the whole scene a little bit darker so you can see that properly. And if you have any more, any other questions about metering, go ahead and check out my metering video in my uh, Now You Know playlist. Um, there's also uh, spot metering, which allows you to, if I wanted to teach from this side of the screen versus right in the middle, um, it allows me to do a spot metering for like this area over here or over here or on top or on the bottom, you know, wherever um, I would want to have it in other than the center. Um, so we have our aperture and our shutter speed going on there. Uh, we have the exposure, which again, you can change by pushing up on this dial. You have your ISO, which is gonna be your sensitivity to light. Lower numbers means clearer images. Uh, higher numbers means grainier images, but in a situation where you are in low light, that's when you wanna go up to higher numbers um, if you have to. Um, you know, that's why they're there. Then you have your white balance. Again, you can change that by pushing right on the dial here. And that's everything in your quick menu. Now, before we get into the actual menu here, um, which is what we're gonna wrap up on, keep in mind, I may skip over some things in the menu because one, um, it may be laid out on the outside of the camera. We've already gone over it. No sense in going over it again. Um, it may be something that uh, a lot of people don't need to know because you're not really gonna change those things. They're just in the camera. Um, but if I do skip over something or I don't go over something in as much detail as you would like, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any questions about this camera or any other camera that you have for that matter. Um, let's go ahead and start going through here. So we're gonna go ahead, start up at the top. So you can see that there are different tabs here. You have your shooting menu, which is for the camera sh taking pictures. You have your video menu. You have your custom menu, you have your or you have your you have your custom settings, you have your regular settings, and you have your playback menu. And just the uh, shooting menu is going to have eight pages, so that's how you can kind of go through here. Um, but photo style we already went over. That's in the quick menu, filter settings. That's going to be your uh, painter's palette up here, uh, ratio quality. And we've already gone over these because these are all in your quick menu or laid out on the outside. You know, they do have eye dynamic, eye resolution. They even have like eye HDR. Now, I personally wouldn't turn these on if you plan on editing your pictures, but if you're just using this as a point and shoot and editing with your cell phone, something like that, you know, go ahead and give these a try. You never know. 
uh, does have time lapse, uh, stop motion animation. Uh, if you want to change the shutter type from manual shutter to electronic, your flash, red eye removal, um, your ISO settings here, long shutter noise reduction. I would turn that off if you plan on editing your shots because this does take in raw. Otherwise, you know, why not have it on? Um, I would definitely turn that digital zoom off if it's not already. Um, it definitely degrades your pictures. It's basically what's built into your cell phones already, which is why your zooms look pretty awful on phone cameras. Um, you have your color space, keep that at sRGB. You have your stabilizer, which is that five axis stabilizer that's built in, which is really neat. Um, I would turn this off if you plan on putting this on a tripod, uh, because then the tripod's doing the stabilizing, so keep that in mind. Uh, face recognition, profile setup, that's all preference. Um, the video tab is actually going to be very much the same as the, um, as the camera. It just kind of allows you to adjust those settings for the actual camera mode or the video mode. Um, if you wanted to um, adjust like the filter settings or the record format or anything like that. Um, so I'm just gonna jump right into the custom settings here. So you have your silent mode. This camera does have a silent mode. A lot of people will go, oh, I'll turn that on because I want it to be quiet anywhere I go. If you do turn it into silent mode, it does turn off a lot of features. So keep that in mind. Like it will not allow you to use flash. It's kind of a covert mode, you know, like you don't want people to know you're taking pictures sort of thing. So naturally you wouldn't want to use flash. Uh, you have your autofocus, auto exposure lock button, and what you want that to do. You have your half press release, which I would definitely keep off because what that means is if you push halfway down on the shutter button, it just takes a picture. Uh, you have your quick autofocus, eye sensor autofocus, um, autofocus assistant lamp. That's going to be this light right here, which shines out a little LED light to help it autofocus if there is a lack of light or detail. Uh, direct focus area, I mean your autofocus, manual focus, peaking histogram, like all of those graphs if you want to um, shoot with those on the screen. Your dial guide, kind of your display area, how you want that to show up. Uh, your auto review, how long you would like the picture to show up after you take the picture. Uh, your function button set, if you want to change any of these function buttons, function four, function one, function two your zoom lever, your zoom or zoom, your quick menu if you wanted to change that, your ring dial set here, uh, the eye sensor, your touch settings if you wanted to turn the touch screen on or off, uh, you have your menu guide. Now if you do have the menu guide on, that means that uh, it's going to tell you up here kind of what it does, which is a really nice feature for the Panasonic cameras. Then we have our setup, which is going to be kind of our menu information, language, time, if you need to uh, reset your settings. So say you're on a trip and you do something funny and you're like, I'm not sure what I did with my camera, but now it's not taking pictures the same way. Go in and reset your settings. Um, it won't delete any pictures just by resetting. So that's safe. It's just gonna reset the settings to how you took it out of the box. Um, sometimes it's better to redo that than trying to figure out what you did if you don't know what you did. Uh, you can reset your Wi-Fi settings. Format is something I always like to talk about on my videos, why it's important to format. Formatting is going to be for when you want to reuse your SD card, if you're not the type of person to go out and buy a new one every time. Um, if you, say, got back from a vacation and you're going to go to a birthday party or something like that and uh, you want to start fresh with an all-new card. now. Keep in mind that uh, you definitely want to take the card out, put it into your computer, or plug your camera into your computer. Make sure everything is backed up like it should be um, to an external source, like an external hard drive, an online source like Google Drive or Dropbox. Make sure they're safe before you format, because formatting, permanently deleting everything on there, you're not gonna be able to get any of those memories back. So once you made sure it's backed up, and you wanna go and start new with a fresh card, you wanna go in and format instead of using the trash can to delete all. Because the trash can isn't going to delete the backup data, which means your pictures are still technically possible to retrieve, 
after you format a card, it's not possible to retrieve those photos. And if you don't format your cards and you just decide to delete all every single time, um, over time that can actually uh, weaken the card and that causes the card to lock up and lock you out of your pictures. It also causes it to uh, corrupt your future images. So for the safety of your future memories, just every now and then format your card. Uh, there's an online manual, world time, your travel date, so you can actually set a time to go, hey, the time is going to change um, when I go to this country for a visit. You have Wi-Fi, so you can connect the camera to your phone um, or smart device and transfer the pictures from here directly to your phone, so you can share on social media with friends and family. Uh, you can turn on and off the beep. You know, the monitor display, the brightness level, the USB connection, TV connection. You know, like I said, a lot of these you're really not going to change. This quick menu that we went over are probably going to be the settings that you're going to change the most, which is why they made it part of the quick menu, so you don't have to dig through the actual menu. Um, the playback menu here is going to be specifically for pictures you've taken, so you can do a slideshow, uh, your, you know, your location logging if you want to tag the GPS, um, raw processing, you can do some editing in here like clear retouching, um, edit with a edit a time lapse video, do a stop motion video, resize and crop and rotate, all of these things in your playback menu here. That pretty much covers everything on the ZS100. It's a pretty simple camera. I find that it's extremely easy to use. Um, it is a little big for some people. People take a look at this and go, oh, that's a pretty big point and shoot. Um, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, with a one inch sensor, it's definitely one of the more higher end point and shoot cameras. And with its manual modes, giving you room to learn more about what makes a photograph is really, really neat. Um, if you guys have any questions about your camera, whether it be this camera or another, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye. Thank you.